Hey, how's it going? Uh, so I just wanted to post a quick review uh, from the first section of Chapter 5. Hopefully, uh, I know it's been a little chaotic. People have been gone. I don't even remember if everybody was here for the first one uh, or even when that was. So I just wanted to post a quick review. Uh, you can come back and watch this if it's helpful to you. Uh, if not, so be it. Okay, uh, so we started Classical Greece quite a while ago. Let's move right into it. Uh, section one is about early Greece. We started with uh, talking about how it's a small, rugged peninsula. The geography makes it really difficult. Let me move my face if you can read that. Uh, it's a home of a series of advanced civilizations uh, from the Minoans to the Mycenaeans. We'll talk about those in just a minute. They have early trade uh, to the democracy of Athens. And the early civilizations really helped lay the framework for the success that Greece will have later. Uh, and they leave behind a legacy that helps define what we think of as Western civilization. Uh, things to focus on. What were the Minoan and Mycenaean cultures like? Uh, again, we'll talk about those in just a second. Uh, what were the common characteristics of Greek city-states? And what role did gods play in mythology and in, in the Greek culture? Uh, so we start with the Minotaur and the Labyrinth. It's rumored that King Minos had a maze and in that maze lives a minotaur. Uh, it's a half beast, half man, like a bull. Uh, and it's said that he would eat trapped prisoners. And it could just be a rumor to keep people away. But uh, when it was excavated in 1890, the archaeologists didn't find a minotaur, but they did find a civilization that was later named Minoan. Uh, after the king who ruled there, King Minos. Uh, so to start with the Minoans, they lived about 3000 BC. Uh, on this map, you'll see they're down here, the Minoans in Crete today. They traded goods on the Aegean Sea, which is right here. Um, they trained with mainland Greece. They live about 5,000 years ago to about 3,000 years ago. We'll talk about how they, how they perished in a minute. Uh, let me clear that off for them. Uh, they're strongly tied to the sea because they're an island and they have to be. The women are very important to the society. Uh, the priests and nobles, which is pretty much unheard of at that time. And it's mostly speculation because we can't read their language, but it isn't tied to mainland Greece. So it's some offshoot of some Greek culture. Uh, on the contrary, the Mycenaeans, um, they live down here. They are a small kingdom that fight one another. They are considered the first Greeks because they spoke a Greek language. They trade with the Minoans. They copy their writing system. They uh, alter it so then we know it's Greek. Uh, and they're built on warfare, which is much different than the, uh, the Minoans. And we'll talk about why that's important in just a second. Um, <clears throat> their downfall. The Minoans were not really sure what happened, but it's thought to be a volcanic eruption, which blew up most of Crete. When you live on a volcanic island, that does tend to happen. Um, things go boom. Uh, the Mycenaeans, they have constant internal violence. They're fighting one another. When you have a society based on warfare, it is, uh, it's tough to keep up on resources and honestly human lives when you're fighting hand-to-hand -hand combat. Uh, it's also thought that drought and famine sped up their downfall. But if they both died out, why are we talking about them? It's because they are the early Greek civilizations that helped lay the foundation for the later Greek civilizations. Uh, they play a huge role in shaping the future of Greece. The, the, the civilizations of Greece nearly disappeared off, disappeared off the face of the earth. But thanks to their advancements, we have Greek culture and thankfully democracy, which is a big part of why the United States has the government we do. The city-states are established in about 800 BC. It stabilizes itself. Uh, they stop fighting. They settled down, raised villages. Uh, they start building cities and they are centered on the polis, which is the basic poli political unit of Greek city-states. Uh, it, uh, when you think about a polis, it just means city, um, like Indianapolis, Indiana City. Um, pretty simple, right? 
What do you think about when you think about Greek geography? Uh, if you can look at the topography on the map over here, you will notice that there is a ton of red. That color does not show very well on there. I don't know what color to use, maybe blue. Uh, there's a ton of red down the middle of Greece, and those are mountains in this region. That makes it really difficult to travel from one side of the island to the other. Uh, it makes communication difficult. It makes transportation difficult. The fastest way to honestly get from one side to the other is probably sail around. And you'll notice all these islands. There's probably about 2,000 Greek islands. And of course, they're not all pictured there. But the, the point I want you to take away from this is that it's very rugged and it's very difficult to travel. Um, this makes the city-states form their own government laws and customs. So instead of all being Greeks, they're like Athenians and Spartans. Um, they are really individualistic societies, even though they're all technically Greeks. Let me get back to the clicker there. Okay. <clears throat> Life in the polis. It's the it's basically the center. It'd be like a downtown area today. It is where people gather to shop, to uh, to hang out, to socialize, and. We talked about how the residents don't identify themselves as Greek or others residents of a particular city state, and that really kind of creates a divisive feeling. Uh, but that's just, they don't see it any other way. That's just how they live, right? Uh, typically, the cities are built around an acropolis, which is a high area, such as a hill. You'll notice on the hill right here. Whoops, a little aggressive. Let me Let me retry that right here uh, is a temple <laughs> uh, and on that temple they put them up high on the hill because that they, they they feel it's closer to their gods and their gods live in mount olympus which is the highest mountain in greece uh, so a higher temple higher to the heavens closer relationship to their gods and goddesses in greek mythology um Below the Acropolis is the Agora, and that's uh, that's where people hang out. Um, they gossip, discuss politics. Uh, I'm sorry, I think I misspoke earlier. The Agora is like the downtown. The polis is just the uh, the city state. Uh, okay, uh, so here is a different layout. I think you can see the whole thing. Let me move that. Um, the Acropolis, the hill. There's a temple right up there. You can see it right here. Um, there's walls that go all the way around it for defense. It's pretty handy. You'll notice that there's a port down here for shipping. They're uh, largely based on the sea because they're a giant peninsula. You have a stadium for training athletes. And then outside of the walls, you have fields. There's crops, houses, um, other things. You can have a village house and a townhouse. You can be ritzy. It's fantastic. Ritz like the crackers. Okay, uh, now let me move this again because it's in the way. The uh, Greek city-states differ in geography because of geography and communication. Uh, Corinth was a trading oligarchy style. An oligarchy means they have a a group of a group of rulers that rule together. But probably the most important city-state is Athens, and they are the birthplace of democracy. They lay the foundation for a lot of governments in the world today. Um, on the contrary, you have Sparta. Sparta, we talked about the movie 300. Um, of course, the movies exaggerate a little bit, but they are they really are a military-style city-state, and they train hard. Um, they have slaves to do their work so they can spend more time training and military, um, and that's what they do. They don't really have jobs. The men train for the military, the slaves do all the labor, the women uh, are regarded as highly important because they can have children. Um, war is seen as a way to maintain order in society in Sparta. The, they have seven to one slaves outnumbering the citizens, which would you would think would lead to a rebellion, but they they they're so strong militarily that a revolt would be almost foolish if you were the slaves, right? Because they don't have any power or weapons. Um, the weak Spartan children are left to die in the wild because they they fight with the phalanx. We talked about that in uh, maybe a later episode. Um, 
they fight with the phalanx, and if you have weak soldiers, then it can disrupt the whole formation. So the children are tested, and they're left in the wild to die. If they come back, they can join the military. If not, you know, they're obviously dead. Um, the healthy boys train to fight early. They start at seven, and they they work in combat school until they're 20, and they become uh, full soldiers called hoplites. Um, and that leads to a strong military all the time. And then if you are in the army for 10 years and you live to 30, you can retire and become citizens. Uh, I think there's some land incentives. The women are very important in Greek society, like I mentioned, uh, especially Spartan society, because they bear children. And when you have strong children, they're raised by strong women, and then they become strong people. Moving on to gods and heroes, we have uh, myths and legends, which are stories told to explain natural phenomena and events of the distant past. Um, I think today in culture, we have family traditions and stories passed down. This is kind of their way of telling that. Also, the Greek myths, myths explain where they come from and how they should live uh, and how to cope with the uncertain world. On the bottom of this slide, we have the 12 Olympic gods in Greek culture. There is more than 12 gods. Uh, I think there's hundreds. But these are the 12 that live on Mount Olympus, the most highly regarded gods and goddesses. Um, yep, there we go. Believed in hundreds of gods and goddesses, each covering a certain aspect of their nature or life. One might be the god of war. One might be the god of hunting or goddess of love, goddess of wine. There's a god for all. Or got a goddess for everything. Uh, they have, like I said, there's 12 that live on Mount Olympus, which is the highest mountain in Greece. There's a picture. Uh, their gods were not perfect. In fact, in fact, most of them were heavily flawed, and that makes them relatable to people. They say, if my god isn't perfect, then I it's okay if I'm not perfect either. Uh, and that that's kind of a a wild philosophy, I think, to a lot of us. Uh, I think most of the time we're taught that we're trying to be as close to perfect as possible, uh, be a good person as much of the time as you can. Uh, and the Greek mythology is like, well, try your best, but if you can't do it all the time, uh, just remember your gods aren't perfect either. They sin. Uh, I think we talked about how Zeus cheated on his wife all the time. Um, I think Hephaestus was thrown off of Mount Olympus. It's just a wild mythology series. Um, so that brings us to our closure on early Greek life. It's built on a foundation of myth and reality, both important in understanding how they develop over time. Uh, the main takeaway I want you to take away from this is that the early Greek civilizations, such as the Minoans and the Mycenaeans, laid the foundation for later uh, Greek civilizations. Uh, and the geography of Greece makes it difficult for them to unite as a country. They are all separate city-states like Athenians and Spartans, uh, Corinthians. So. Just keep that in mind as we move forward. Uh, and that is all I have for you today. Peace.